Hello, hello, and welcome to Having a Glow. In this six-part series, we'll be discussing many various tips and techniques to get better looking results when working with glows. We'll be diving into the anatomy of glows, understanding the technical side of things, such as the blur algorithms, gamma, color space, etc. No plugins are required. All you need to follow along is the default After Effects glow, as these techniques can be used regardless of your toolset. Part one is some theory, but it's crucial for achieving good results, so let's get started. First things first, we're gonna talk about gamma. Gamma is super important to having a good glow. Here I have some text and I've just got some color matted to that text and we have glow. And we are currently working at 32 bits per channel, which is an absolute must for working with glows. HDR values are super important. And currently we're working in working space none. So in After Effects, that means we're working in sRGB or gamma 2.2, which is technically incorrect. So let's see what that means for us. If we just apply the default glow, I'm gonna lower the threshold and make a really large soft glow. Okay, and there we have it. There's our overly bright glow. And what I'm gonna do just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna render this out. I'm gonna save it as sRGB because that's the color space we're working in. And now let's try a different color space. Let's try working linearly. So let's go sRGB 2.1, linearize working space, blend colors using 1.0 gamma. And there we have that result. So I'm gonna save this one out as well. Let's compare the pair. So here we have the sRGB result and let's compare it with the linear result. We see that the problem with sRGB is that the brights are too bright, the color for the light falls off too quickly and the colors don't blend correctly. And that's a problem because glows often have areas that are super, super bright. And if we're in an sRGB color space, that's gonna to become too bright and then the fall off, it's gonna fall off way too quickly. So we can see that the linear color space doesn't suffer from those bunched up too bright areas and the fall off is much more uniform and the colors are actually blended correctly. Comparing these two results, we might think, oh, we should definitely always work linearly in After Effects then if we're doing glows. Working linearly is definitely recommended for doing glows. The problem with working linearly in After Effects is that it's much lower and it also has some other quirks that are quite annoying or frustrating to get used to, which kind of makes working in a little bit of a pain. It's definitely possible to get beautiful glow results using sRGB color space. It's just infinitely more painful. So I would definitely not recommend it if you want to keep your sanity because you'll always be juggling the parts that are too bright and trying to mix them with the parts that are too dull. And it's going to be very frustrating. A solution that we have to this problem is other glow plugins such as Real Glow, and sorry, being a cheap skater, don't have a license for that, have gamma correction built in, which means it can emulate working in a linear color space while not working in a linear color space. So it's essentially the best of both worlds. You get the speed of working at the default color space, but you also get the correct gamma. The default glow does not have such an option, so I would recommend always working linearly if you're using the default glow. It's not the end of the world, it's just you have to keep a few other things in mind. Uh, in the next part, we are going to talk about, we're going to deconstruct what a glow is, the algorithms used, and how we can use that knowledge to help us get better results.